Hello, welcome to Vod of Consciousness with Sientir. I am Sientir. Uh, I don't know why I keep hitting H for that, but you can support me at patreon.com slash Sientir. And as you might have noticed, we are no longer in the Shiver Peak Mountains. We are, in fact, over here in Chobok Village. Uh, I've already done it in hard mode before. It's very easy to do in hard mode, so whenever I see the quest for it, the Zyshin quest for it, I like to pick it up. But we have not done it for our book right here. Um, last time, you might recall, we were trying to do the Frost Gate, and then I died, and it was embarrassing and sad. I have some ideas about how I might approach that involving rangers, but here we are. Uh, we're in Tropic Village, and this is a very, very heavy tutorial mission. Uh, so you only get four people here, and in a lot of these Nightfall missions, there are certain heroes you have to bring with you, such as Koss, for example. I believe you can only start this mission if you have Koss in your party. Um, and there's other missions where we require Milani, Dunkoro. This one has a lot of running around, so I just have some crude charge builds uh, where they will use charge to keep us running fast. Um, the AI is really actually quite good about not overlapping those sorts of party-wide buffs. So if they're like, oh, I've got charge on me, I won't use charge, then the other one will be like, oh, I don't have, I have my charge is restored and yeah. So keep as many sense spear recruits alive as possible, whatever. Um, what'll happen will happen. Mostly what we need to do is just kill these guys. Um, and that guy's just not gonna do anything. So we're probably not running like I don't even know what an optimal build would look like, to be honest. Uh, but we're going to be moving around a lot more quickly. Um, and this is going to be a lot faster paced. This is something that you're going to notice uh, from the decisions that I've made. So. Um, yeah. So one of the things that I think I might want to do before trying to go back to the Shiver Peaks is um, acquire more um, PvE only skills. Uh, there's a copper shilling that's somewhere. Oh, it's over there in the water. Uh, there's a bunch of text going on down below. I honestly just don't care about it, so I'm not going to read it. Um, but it's there. Stuff is happening. Now, so what we need to do uh, for this mission, this is going to go very, very quickly, is there's a couple of parts. The first part is, like, we need to kill all of these pirates. Um, wow, that is a lot of gunk on me. It'd be cleared off if we had some of our traditional ritualist stuff, but we don't, so whatever. Um, so part one... Uh, after we've gotten... Well, part one was clear out some of those initial guys. Then we need to go sink these boats. And to sink these boats, we have to take these oil things and then use these catapult levers to charge them. Uh, and then that will fire on the boats and sink them. We gain morale boosts for that. They tell us all about morale boosts. Um, I guess Cormier has incoming, which also helps with the speed. You're capped at... Um, so this game has capping conventions of like certain things are capped at certain amounts but the individual skills can break that cap um so the maximum speed boost you can accumulate to is 33 percent so if you have like a 25 percent and another 25 percent you'll be at 33 percent um do i need to hit this again to fire yes i do so that's gonna take down that boat uh at this point all we need to do is um just take out the rest of the corsairs so that invo involves taking out this uh, midshipman, <coughs> who I am going to tell him he moves like a dwarf, which is going to make him sit down. Uh, he is running around kind of crazy-like, so I'm just going to knock him down again. You move like a dwarf is extraordinarily strong. Um, so we're just... The reason why I'm not hearing about a lot of the dialogue, by the way, is it's, like, entirely tutorial stuff of, like, this is how things work. It's just like, yes, thank you. I know. See, so there's certain skills that, like, are just completely ineffectual. 
um, against certain types of enemies. So, like, the knockdown on this does not work against certain against enemies that can't be knocked down. And, unfortunately, Dolia like, mounted enemies on Dolyax cannot be knocked down. So, it's just, it does nothing there. Um, <clears throat> so, this is telling us about, like, patrols and stuff like that. Um... It's not a huge deal, I don't think. Like, I've probably over-aggroed slightly. But I'm just not too worried about it. Um, we have an extraordinarily large group of allies with us. Far more than is necessary. So... Yeah. <clears throat> and, um, that's that mission. So you can see, like, it's very short. Yes. Take that, Corsair dogs. And don't come back. You've done well. Oh, this is Cormier before she's blinded. On us, On both of us. These Corsair raids have gotten worse of late. They have. It is a matter of concern for the Sun Spears. Continue your training. We shall speak again of this at the Sun Sphere Great Hall. Of course. And always remember, you never fight alone. Uh, so, like, we get this, but because I've already done it, you don't, I don't actually get any reward for having done so. You can see how easy that one is, though. Um, and then we're just popped out here, uh, where we can talk to this guy. Um, Yeah. So, as you can see, that mission is very easy. Most, of the, most, if not all, of the dialogue is just telling you game mechanics. <clears throat> so, it's just not very interesting. And, <coughs> and that was like five minutes, maybe. Um, so, we do, however, I believe... Yes, we get an entry in this book. So, let's read about Chabak Village. So, it says... In the tropical lands of Ilona, young boys and girls dream of growing up to join the elite order of the Sun Spears, defenders of the three Ilonian provinces of Kornavabi and Istan. Renowned for their tactical prowess and unflinching honor, the order of Sun Spears certainly inspired the young hero of this tale. This story started on the very day Spear Marshal Cormier welcomed the young hero to the ranks of the Sun Spears. Training exercises quickly turned into a skirmish with corsairs raiding the nearby village of Chabak. Never one to pass up an opportunity to train her recruits in the art of battle and the ethics of defending the meek, Spear Marshal Cormier guided our hero and the rest of the recruits into Chabak, who let them take the lead in repelling the Corsair raid. After sinking two pirate ships, the Corsair invasion came to an end. But a storm had been brewing for a long time, and Cormier knew these young heroes must be ready for whatever was to come. So, um, the next mission chronologically... Here, I believe, is the Jockaneer Diggings. Uh, there's something, actually, that I wanted to look up, though. Ray of Judgment. Uh, can be gotten all over factions. That is for sure. Wow. Yep, all over factions. So, I might... If I don't have it already... Do I have it already? Well, I'm not going to be able to check here, that's for sure. So the question is, do I want to go do the Jockaneer Diggings mission, or do I want to... Eh. Actually, what I want to do, now that I think about it, actually... Um, is I believe I can go here. I'm not going to do this right now. I'm not, not here for this mission. Actually, tick off hard mode, too. Uh, I believe there is a hero over here that I can go get. I don't know if I need to do a, more of a quest for it or not. Um, I'm going to throw on a few more heroes just in case I do need to. Uh, the rest of this bar is okay. Um, let's see. Yes, I'm, I'm wanting to go here. Uh, okay, I need to look up how to do this thing. 
excuse me. I'm I'm deciding I want to try to get another hero. Uh, and for that, I need to identify how to get to this hero. This area is very loud, isn't it? Um, I want to see... Yeah, okay, I don't have, like, anything in Smiting Purse. Um... So there's a hero named Raza whose profession can be kind of changed at whim. And I want to figure out uh, in the Gate of Anguish. Gate of Anguish. Uh, where's Gate of Anguish? Okay, and I need to talk to... All oh, right, this is... You. Um, with Abaddon's defeat, the realm of torment is being explored every day. I heard news of a passage from Abaddon's gate to a newly discovered area called the Heart of Abaddon. What secrets might lie within? I would visit myself, but I cannot leave my post. Investigate for me, and I'll make it worth the effort. Uh, with the knowledge I bring back, you'll be the envy of your clergy. Okay, so this quest is one that will allow us to be able to get a new hero. This character is a little anemic on the number of heroes unlocked, and I want to do something about that with some of the remaining appropriate time for this episode. Um, that is not enough stuff for me to be concerned. Yeah, I think the rest of this is probably okay. Probably. I don't know. I'm going to roll with it. See what happens. Um, but your reputation precedes you, hero. If you have defeated a god, who might tell you where you may or may not go? Okay. So Heart of Abaddon is just kind of like, I don't know, an area. So we need to come in here and take out some dudes. But they're using Quickening Zephyr. going to wreck our energy. I don't know why I'm using that. There. Um, there's a word of madness that's healing this guy, and that's probably causing problems. Okay, we are hyper over aggroed. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so I'm just going to actually back up a bit because this is, this is utterly insane. I don't... There's there's just so much going on here. Um, oh my goodness. How are we not just, like, all dead? Yeah. About time. Okay, I might just be leaving this zone because this is a clear case of aggressive over aggro. I mean, like, aggressive over aggro. Why am I even walking? I could just double-click on the outpost. Okay, so let's take that smarter and less dumb. Um, I actually want Daedalon, I th think. Yeah, I want Daedalon in the party instead of what Elias was doing. Uh, we'll continue to run Ogden. I think that's okay. Uh, and, yeah, let's see how these guys do. Sure, why not? Um, I'm not sure that I want Snowstorm. I th think I want Lightbringer's Gaze instead. That seems superior. I, do I get anything from that rank? Not really. Um, but just taking it down allows me to boost command. That makes that slightly better. I'll leave it. Okay, so let's try that again. Um, this time I have a little bit more uh, interrupting capability. And the Word of Madness is kind of our, our primary initial target. So if that can go down, then I think we can actually kill these guys in a reasonable time span. Okay, and then we got a bunch of, like, aggro off the side here.
Um, so I want to try to stop these guys. The Sword of Madness is not wanting to go down. I'm focusing my energy on trying to keep it dazed. There we go. I should allow the rest of these things to actually die. Which is eminently useful. Ooh. One of those guys is duplicating over there. Yeah, when they don't have the healers up, we can actually like get some DPS on them, which helps us actually take them down, which is, as it turns out, very useful. Okay, so we've cleared that initial like wad of enemies. I'm not sure what this Binding Guardian is up to. Oh, are you casting Glimmer of Light on us? That's very kind of you. Um, okay, now that we've kind of cleared that out a little bit, I want to... Take out this word of madness. Um, wow, that was a startling boom. Um, looks like there's a couple of them actually in this group, so. Quickening Zephyr is not helping our energy levels at all. Ray of Judgment is helping though. It's interesting that, um, this must target a demonic servant of Abaddon, but the redirect can go to anyone. Man, this area is weird and creepy. Do we need to go, uh, what's everybody's energy level? I'm gonna just pop up all these so I can see energy levels, because there's a lot of QZ, Quickening Zephyr floating around. Quickening Zephyr is an interesting animal. Wow, Norgu is getting some serious pain handed to him, and I don't know why. Man, the Mesmers have, like, no energy. That's not ideal. On the other hand, it turns out normal mode is a lot less dangerous than hard mode. And these guys are going down way easier than the dwarves were. I mean, granted, and part of it, part of it is we have a larger party, um, and that always helps. Having a, having a full party as opposed to having only eight. Um, but these guys are level twenty eight, so it's not like they're not dramatically over leveled and stuff like that. It's just a bunch of stuff kind of working in tandem. Uh, I'm. Pull, I was pulling back there a little bit because I didn't want to potentially also aggro those guys over there. Which I figured would be bad. Uh, just in case anybody was wondering what my thinking was. Some of what I was doing. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we can even out DPS. The words, words of Madness are not very powerful healers. Um, their biggest claim, I guess you could say, uh, if you can even say such a thing, is that they have some uh, Smiting Prayer support stuff. I don't know. They're not... They're not completely ineffective, but they're just not very good at actually healing if that makes sense um man some of this imagery is just crazy what's interesting right here is there's a bridge there um kind of going underneath so we're going underneath um some sort of portal bridge that leads somewhere <clears throat> there you can see the character we're looking for we're looking for Razo over there uh and he's some sort of mist entity 
with that's like not entirely defined. Uh, that guy's just doing annoying things. Um, the hunching down motion was making me worried it might be trying to do the splitting thing that these guys can do. All the torments. Um, it makes them take double damage, but if it succeeds, then they uh, make a copy of themselves. So you kind of want to generally avoid having that happen. So we're just coming down here to talk to Raza. He says, you're not from this place. Who and what are you? Uh, I have been alone for what seems ages. I am Raza, created from the mists. I have no memories of my creation, though. The past is shrouded in fog. Abaddon bound me to this plane. His minions blessed me with knowledge to fulfill a great purpose. However, I can sense Abaddon is no more. Now I am without purpose, my existence without meaning. So tell me, are you here to give me my purpose? We must find our own purpose in life, Raza. Search for my own purpose? An interesting concept. Not be told what to do, to merely exist to find a purpose. I find you curious, unlike anything I have ever encountered. I wish a journey with you to learn more about your ways. Perhaps my purpose is to travel through the world with you. We always welcome new allies. Allies, I do not understand your words. I have much to learn. However, you must remove the barriers that bind me if I am to accompany you. I am restrained by guardians summoned by Abaddon. As long as they exist, I must remain here. Destroy these guardians and Raza will be your allies. So now we have to go and we have to clear out the um, the binding guardians that we saw kind of scattered all over the place. So they just kind of send us all around the zone and, and we'll clear that out and uh, add Raza to our party and or to our roster, I suppose is more accurate, and probably kind of call things there a little bit. I might give him a um, restoration rune. I'll have to look at what my options are that way. Um... Let's see, that guy... Judge's Insight is interesting. It causes damage to be dealt um, with fire, no, with uh, holy with additional armor penetration, which is actually quite strong. Um, but it... Yeah, so now the Binding Guardians are enemies instead of allies. Um... Oh, and these summon groups of Marganites. Fascinating. Marganites are probably a little bit more dangerous than the demons, actually. Um, just because they have more legitimate monks. Man, Panic is so strong. Uh, yeah, clear some of this out. Stop bothering my dudes. Okay. Oh, yeah, we don't want to hang out in that well. That well is bad. That, that well is causing our health degeneration. Um, so this is just going to spawn a bunch of Marganites. We're basically going to get Raza and call the episode there. Oh, this is a bunch of um, Shadow Warriors. I believe these might be Menzies minions. I don't know why everyone's taking so much damage. Nope, these guys are, are affected by Lightbringer's Gaze, though. Oh, the Elementalists. That would be why. Oh, and Barrage Ranger. Yeah, that's going to do it, too. Barrage is very strong. But we'll take out this Binding Guardian and move on to the next one. Actually, what we're going to do is we're going to wait here for a little bit because you might notice... Some of these health bars are a little low, actually, or energy bars. Um, thinking about it, I think, well, I mean, we can go this way and fight these guys. I've kind of figured some of the energy can regenerate while we're running. That was kind of what my thought was. Uh, so I want to take out this arm so it will stop making... Picking Zephyrs because they're very annoying. Word needs to, word of madness over there needs to go down too. Man, the thing about uh, the call the torment is that when they use it, they stop doing anything else. 
So that has a consequence of making them oddly vulnerable to um, to attack because they stop acting, right? Uh, we're being swarmed by some titans. Which is certainly a thing that's happening. Uh, I would like to not lose some of the progress we made on you. I noticed that the thing was regenerating health. Um, oh, this is going to be annoying. Madness Titans are basically souped up roller beetles, and they're very obnoxious because they have a very strong capability to um, block and very good health regeneration skills and stuff. So they're very durable, is what I'm saying. And I believe they cause burning just by being near them. The Titan junk. These guys are apparently uh, obsessed with me. Just proving to be somewhat unpleasant. Ah, oh, the blocks. Blocks. Let's see if I can back up some. Um, man, smiting prayers had so much potential to be really cool, but they didn't want to make it good because they didn't want the class best at healing to have good damage. Then they made ritualists. So I don't I don't know. It's an inconsistent philosophy is what I'm saying. Uh, ritualist healing is considered to be very strong, incidentally. Um, if you're going to heal and you're not monk primary, then you're probably going to want to heal using ritualist skills, not monk skills. Because monk skills are kind of balanced around the primary attribute of divine favor, which means skills that they use that target allies. Or maybe it's just spells. Um... Let's find out together. Um, allies are healed for 3.2 whenever you cast monk spells on them. So yeah. So monk spells uh, with divine favor. So basically monk spells are calibrated with divine favor in mind. So they're actually a little bit weak if you don't have divine favor uh, to some extent. Whereas ritualists healing skills are calibrated as if you didn't have divine favor. Because they don't. it doesn't apply to them for one thing. And So um, just as a, a quick comparison actually uh, if we look at Dunkoro here this is 140 health at 13 healing prayers um, and oh I don't actually have uh, the guy with me so never mind I will have to compare later but um, suffice to say there are some very serious differences in values okay so he says um, the barriers are no more. I offer you my skills and my insight. As a child of the mists, I have an affinity for things spiritual. In return, you will show me how you experience life and aid me in finding the purpose for which I was created. I must take this time to reflect. I will meet you later. Um, so that completes the quest, and we can go back here and talk to the guy and get our reward of Raza joining our party. Um, but also, if I uh, say boot... I don't know. Ogden. Boot Ogden add um, Rias back in. So here you see he has 11 restoration magic. This is a healing for 148. Like the raw healing on this is actually in the, okay, 5 energy, 1 second cast time, 4 second recharge. And this is 5 energy, 4 second recharge, right? Um, so if we look back at here, same, same uh, cost and recharge, slightly longer cast time on this, the 3 quarter second does matter. The health sacrifice doesn't apply if there aren't any spirits within your shot. Now, um, this skill is stronger in that all party members in your shot gain health equal to the divine favor bonus from this spell, uh, and it disables your smiting prayers. This is actually a really good skill for, for heroes to do, uh, but basically this does some AoE healing to it, so it is a bit stronger from that regard, but you can see that the raw healing values are calibrated differently. Um, this is very strong. This is also very strong. This is 90 health, 3 second recharge, 3 quarter second cast time, and the ally loses a condition for each spirit with an earshot, which is usually going to be about 4 with him. So this is ridiculously strong. Um, you can compare that to the elite over here, uh, restore condition, which will remove all conditions and then heal for health for each condition removed. 
this is a, a pretty strong skill if you're going to specifically be going after conditions. But note that it does not heal if it doesn't remove conditions. This is very, very strong. So uh, anyway, that's just some random stuff there. Um, I need to go talk to Chaplain Aratis over here, whatever his name is supposed to be. Um, and see what he has to say. Yeah, Domain of Anguish. I'm not going to do a whole lot of stuff here. Uh, he says, A being created from the mists? I would have never thought that possible. I knew the heart of Abaddon held secrets, but this is far more than I could have hoped. I would like to meet this Raza. Bring him, or it, rather, around when you get the chance. Um, so that unlocks Raza. Raza's sentient entity spawned from the mists. It has the knowledge and capabilities of human, but lacks common sense. As a result, it asks odd questions about human emotions, contemplates human motivations, and attempts to duplicate human mannerisms. Raza shares a connection with all things spiritual and is a powerful ritualist. So um, you can, if you go back into the uh, the area there, you can actually change its primary profession. It was not originally that way. I was actually reading some stuff where the developers are talking about this. And that uh, capability was not initially possible, so they just made him a ritualist. Uh, but they later added on the ability for him to become uh, any profession when they added mercenary heroes and that technology was added to the game. So I think that's really interesting, really interesting bit of trivia. Uh, but that's going to bring us to the end of this episode, everyone. So until next time, take care. Bye-bye.